Welcome to Epworth United Methodist Church, where we follow the example of Christ by Morning, Epworth. Good morning. Welcome to a glorious day in God's house, and greetings, friends who are worshiping with us online. We're glad to have you with us. Thank you all for your faithful stewardship through your regular giving. As a reminder, any of us can give via electronic banking on the Epworth website or by snail mail to the church. For those of you are, who are here, there is a plate outside the worship center as well. Please stand for the call to worship. Come to the Lord. We will walk in the light of faith. Come to the Lord. We will walk in the light of faith. Come to the Lord. We will sing in the light of faith. Come to the Lord. We will live. Please join in singing our morning our opening song Gather Us In. Our scripture reading comes from the book of 2 Corinthians, verses, I have to look, verses um, 5 through 10 and 
14 through 17 of the second chapter. Now regarding the one who started all of this, the person in question who caused all this pain, I want you to know that I am not the one injured in as much as, with a few exceptions, all of you. So I don't want to come down too hard. What the majority of you agreed to as punishment is punishment enough. Now is the time to forgive this man and help him back on his feet. If all you do is pour on the guilt, you could very well drown him in it. My counsel now is to pour on the love. In the Messiah, in Christ, God leads us from place to place in one perpetual victory parade. Through us, he brings knowledge of Christ. Everywhere we go, people breathe in the exquisite fragrance. Because of Christ, we give off a sweet scent rising to God, which is recognized by those on the way of salvation. An aroma redolent with life. But those on the way to destruction treat us more like the stench from a rotting corpse. This is a terrific responsibility. Is anyone competent to take it on? No. But at least we don't take God's word, water it down, and then take it to the streets, streets to sell it cheap. We stand in Christ's presence when we speak. God looks us in the face. We get what we say straight from God and say it as honestly as we can. The word of God for the people of God. Good morning, friends. As we uh, come together for prayer, first I want to share with you a surprise joy. Zina Werewar is leaving for uh, his home country of Liberia this week for three weeks, where he is getting married. Oh. <laughs> So I said, well, are you going to be bringing your bride back with you? And he said, well, she'll be coming a little later. And I said, well, your church family will be very anxious. I did not turn on my power, did I, Jim? <laughs> so now you can't hear me. Do I have to say that all over again? OK, all right. That, they'll catch it in the, in the video. You all hear, heard me about Zena, yeah. He, he, those two were scrambling back there, so I, I caught it. Um, so anyway, we celebrate with Zena. We look forward to meeting his bride. Uh, and uh, he told me this a couple of weeks ago, and I was speechless, which you know rarely happens. Uh, so um, uh, he said they had been um, courting long distance, so we will be interested uh, to, to meet her. Um, Emily Triano was here for Cora's Celebration of Life service on Friday, and uh, she continues to recover well from her hip surgery. She looked like she was doing well. It is wonderful to have Elva Simpson back with us today. She uh, had a um, major task down on the border. Uh, I know that Nigel is definitely glad to have her home. Uh, that, that was, it was a long journey for him, too. Uh, and, uh, and so we praise God for your work. We know that it was uh, a, a, a lot of hard 
wearisome work, but very, very important. Um, so we continue to pray for that situation down on the border, um, for all of the children and families that um, need to be placed. And interestingly enough, um, when I was looking back three years ago at um, the text that, that I am preaching on today, um, we were praying for the same situation of um, children and families um, seeking a better life in the United States, um, crossing the border um, uh, illegally, um, but crossing nonetheless, seeking safety, seeking sanctuary. Uh, and um, so this is not a new issue. Um, and, uh, and so we continue to pray for the work that is going on there and um, for all of the families that, um, uh, that are now um, uh, trying to make their way and, and for the United States uh, and our nation as we try to sort all of that out. Um, are you now staying here or are you going back? Here. You're here. Praise God, right, Nigel? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, we um, pray for John Nicholson's brother, Pete, whose cancer has returned, uh, and so we hold him in prayer. We also praise God for a wonderful produce market this past week and for the opportunity to um, care for um, 728 people uh, who received free produce um, from us, and it's always a blessing and a privilege to um, to provide out of the abundance uh, of God's abundance to share with our neighbors. So we pray for all who, who went through the line and, um, and praise God for the opportunity that we had to do that. And I know that there are other prayers, joys, and concerns um, that are in this place and it, for those of you at home, uh, so let us pray together. We come before you, O oh God, with joyful and grateful hearts. We adore you and praise you for the gift of life and all that is in it. We praise you for the glory of creation in all its grandeur and all its intricacies. In the ongoing mystery of creation that we continue to learn about, but will never fully fathom. All we can do is be in awe of you, our awesome creator. Forgive us, O oh creator, for our abuse of creation, for being more consumers than caretakers for denying the reality of changes in the climate and atmosphere and our contribution to it. Help us to be faithful stewards, to treasure these gifts you have entrusted to us, that our children and children's children can enjoy them as well. Loving God, we rejoice in celebrations of marriage, of birthdays, of babies. We celebrate relationships and families that take all forms, and for our friendships that provide us support and surround us with love and care. We thank you for restored health and for ongoing healing we know that you have created the church to be a body for a reason, Lord Jesus, because we need each other and we are stronger together. together. Let us not forget that you are the head of the church and we look to you for direction and wisdom and a firm foundation for our church, for its mission, and for all of our relationships. 
healing God, we know that there are people who are hurting today, or those who are grieving, who are physically hurting, who are facing the reality of cancer and ongoing illness, who are anxious or depressed, who are still dealing with COVID, who are incarcerated, who are struggling economically, who are alone, who do not know you. Wrap your loving arms around them, gracious God. Shelter them under the shadow of your wing and show us how we can be vessels of hope and comfort. Show us how we can serve and be your loving presence to our neighbors in need. We pray all of this and the prayers of our hearts in the strong name of Jesus, the only Lord and Christ, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us remain seated and sing together, Lord, listen to your children praying. Would you stand with me for the hearing of the gospel lesson? He also said, the kingdom of God is as, as, as if someone who scatters seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day and the seed would sprout and grow, he does not know how. The earth produces of itself first, and the stalk, and then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes with his sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many other such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. 
He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we hear your parables again and again and may still not understand them. Open our minds, open our ears, open our spirits and pour out your spirit upon us that through my words or in spite of them, we would hear your word to us today. Amen. Now, as I have confessed in the past, I am not much of a gardener. I'm going to see my youngest granddaughter and her parents after church today. She is seven. They have a raised garden, and this is the second year that they've done that, and I'm anxious to see and learn about it, and I don't know, maybe get a snack from it. Last year, Ellie, the seven-year-old, was giving me tips on how to properly stake tomato plants and teach me the difference between basil and thyme. She will have to teach me all over again. <laughs> So I'm not necessarily the best preacher to interpret parables and seeds. On the other hand, Jesus gives gardening tips I can actually follow. He says, a farmer goes out and scatters the seeds, and then the sun rises and sets, and the seeds sprout and grow, and he doesn't know how it happens. Yep. That's my level of gardening knowledge. <laughs> to watch creation happen, to know that that's how it, it's intended to happen, even some of the science about it, and still recognize the mystery of it all. And then he talks about the mustard seed, one of the tiniest of all seeds. But when he was talking to that first crowd, the mustard seed would not have brought warm feelings. They would not have been excited to hear him talking about mustard seeds. It is not impress impressive for many reasons. It doesn't grow into a big cedar or a California redwood. It doesn't even grow into a cash crop like wheat. No, a mustard seed grows into a shrub. And not just any shrub, but the kind of shrub that keeps growing and takes over a whole yard. It could be compared to thistles in one of your gardens or the church's garden. And once it starts growing, it's hard to get rid of it. Mustard seed shrubs just keep popping up, dropping seeds and growing some more. So Jesus is inviting us into gardening and planting seeds, then watching them grow to teach us about the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is like these kinds of seeds and what and how they produce. What seems to be a little bit of nothing can grow and grow and grow. It grows in our own backyard, all around us, sprouting in mysterious ways, ways we may not even understand, but we can look for and even participate in. In these parables, what seems so little, even hidden, unpredictable, 
and perhaps even of little value when looked at through our limited lenses. When looked at through divine lenses, seems to have endless possibilities. What seemed like hardly worth anything, hardly worth planting, even annoying from a human point of view, from God's point of view, would become a haven for the birds of the air. The kingdom of God is everywhere. Ordinary, hidden, it is unexpected, it is small, earthy, and right under our feet. It is like the flower that peeks up through the pavement, or the dandelions that take over a well-groomed yard. The kingdom of God is God's presence. It is where God's will is being done. It is where we are living in beloved community, taking care of each other. It is when creation and humanity are working in tandem to bring something beautiful into being. It is when we are willing to go out on a limb like those shrubs to care for one another and to care for our vulnerable neighbors like those birds needing a safe haven. The mustard seeds of the kingdom are growing when we look at things and people and situations from God's point of view, motivating us to plant more mustard seeds, or to cultivate those seeds of love and compassion and hope and trusting, having faith that great things can come, even things that at first glance may not seem that great at all, may seem more like weeds than crops. We begin to plant seeds of the kingdom and watch for signs that the kingdom of God is growing. We plant seeds of kindness, of justice, of care for creation, of generosity that cannot be reciprocated, and we see what God can do with it. We may not feel we have made much of a difference, but just planting one seed of hope, one seed of faith by our example, one seed of inclusive love by making sure that people truly know they are loved by God just as they are. One seed of compassion by serving a neighbor in need are acts of doing God's will. They are signs of the kingdom. We don't make the seeds grow. We plant the seeds. God makes them grow. And sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. It is not in our control to make the seeds grow. Our role is to seek the kingdom of God by planting the seeds, seeking evidence of the kingdom, and celebrating when the seeds begin to grow and spread into hearts and neighborhoods and lives, beginning with the seeds that have been planted in us. In 2 Corinthians, Paul says, pleasing God is the main thing in our lives. Our purpose is to celebrate the new life that God has given all of us through the death and resurrection. It is to be that fragrance like 
seeds in a flower garden. This life has been given to us so that we would live into the grace with a life that reflects who we are, what he values, and sees things as he does. Like little seeds, our small acts done in Jesus' name have the potential for great things. We no longer see from a human point of view. We see from God's point of view. We look for signs of the kingdom of God here on earth, among one another, within the ordinary, everyday stuff of life. And at the same time, we plant hope. We plant grace in a hurting and broken world, just like Elva has been doing. Hard work, but planting hope and planting grace and watching those seeds mysteriously grow. In Christ, we are a new creation. By his grace, the seed of faith has been planted within us. And by his grace, we'll, we will mature and grow in faith. Evidence of that maturity is often in our ability to catch glimpses, to plant seeds, and be a haven of the expansive kingdom of God. And that might be growing, watching the growth of faith in a child, building bridges where there used to be walls, or welcoming a stranger that becomes a friend. And that is our hope and call, to be able to see from a different point of view, from God's point of view that looks beyond what can see to what is only visible with the eyes of faith. To not underestimate that which seems unimportant or even like hardly anything at all. Because otherwise we might miss out on seeing and experiencing the mysterious, the miraculous signs of the kingdom and presence of God all around us. Amen. Amen. Let us stand together for our next song, Hymn of Promise. <laughs>
forth now to plant the seeds of love, of peace, of justice, of compassion, and then watch for signs of the kingdom of God, of God among us, that we would participate in what God is doing in the world. Amen.